Welcome to the HVAC Financial Freedom Podcast, a show to help you create more revenue, profit, and freedom in your life. Now your host, John Victoria. Hello and welcome everyone to the HVAC Financial Freedom Podcast. My name is John Victoria, your host, and today we have an exciting episode for you. I'm here with Jonathan Nevis. Did I pronounce your last name yeah, correct? Yeah, guys, yep. Awesome. From the great state of Massachusetts in uh, around Boston, right? Yes, sir. Awesome. And um, yeah, really excited to you know get jamming on today's conversation. So uh, for those people that don't know you, would love a quick introduction on the company, all about y'all, the services you provide, as well as um, yeah, anything else that you thought would be good. Okay, sure, yeah. So yeah, my name is Jonathan Nevin. Um, two little boys, Elijah, Josiah, uh, my wife, uh, Denicia, she also does work with me as well. Start came over in 2018 and uh, started the company in 2011 out of the back of my pickup truck. Uh, and uh, today it's a, we're on pace to do a little over $10 million. We do uh, plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and uh, are, we're looking probably by the end of the year to start becoming um, an energy auditor slash uh, weatherization services as well, just to kind of round out everything green energy. That's amazing. Yeah. Really uh, that's so exciting. And, um, and it's crazy too, like how we initially connected, it was, it was like so random. Um, so I think a lot of the people who watch this know I'm, I'm very involved in the, uh, the Asian American community and, um, there was someone I met at one of our pastor shoots, uh, Kevin, and and Kevin, I guess he had met you in events. He was the photographer. He was like, oh, I know a guy who does, does stuff with HVAC, and he, he brought us together. It was, it was so crazy. Like, what a story. Yeah, it was really, um, me and Kevin, Kevin really hit it off. I was at a speaking event um, that was talking about how to bring more uh, inclusion to um, Black-owned businesses in the Massachusetts area, something I'm very, very passionate about. And um, he was the photographer there. And I think I just asked him like one question, like where's the bathroom or something. And it turned into like this full blown thing. And then, yeah, he, in he introduced me to you. Uh, it was awesome. And then like a lot of people will say like, oh, I know a guy in HVAC, but like they're, they're really not like a marketer. For, they're just like a general marketing person. So it was, uh, it was really cool. And then me and you would just vibed right away too. And we just talked for like, I don't even know, an hour or more. We didn't even know each other. Yeah. And we were like, we're at the same events. Like we were both at the, the, yeah, we were at the Profit Rocket event yeah. and we're a lot of the same Facebook groups. I was like, wow, we're, I didn't realize, <laughs> you know, how, how closely connected we actually were. <laughs> yep. Awesome. So, yeah, so such a small world, but, um, so I guess just hop into today's topic. Um, and so the topic for today is how Green Energy, your company used the Best Buy model to 10X revenue in your service department. But I think the story really started um, during pandemic, right? You know, things were crazy. There was this feeling of, of worry, like this has never happened before. And, you know, things are shutting down and concerns. And I know even personally, I was, I was feeling a bit depressed. Like I was like, wow, I, I can't do the things that I used to do. And um, I don't really know where the world is headed. And so could you maybe like, maybe step back into that moment in time, like how, how were things for you? Like, what did that look like um, prior to like really, you know, seeing the traction that you did after um, things really kicked off? Yeah, a lot of people my age or even around here, they all have like really young businesses. And so for me, starting off in 2011 to like 2018, my wife came on board. 2019, I started to see a lot of changes happening. I felt so positive about 2020. And then, you know, my, my second son was born in February 11th, uh, 2020. So I have this newborn and then like right after that, boom, the whole world shuts down. And the business that I built up at that point for like nine years, pretty much looking like it's going down the tubes. And so, yeah, I, I dealt with a lot of bad stuff. I was in a really dark place for a few months, especially to my personality. I, I really like to do something, you know, and I, if I feel like I'm not a doer and I'm like useless. So that was a tough moment and really just trying to, come to grips with um the next phase because i'm like well if i'm going to lose my business like what's next you know and so 
like I said, it was, it was a lot of emotions going on at that time. Yeah. And it's, it's like, that's your baby. It's, it was like at this point, seven, eight, nine years. And it's like, wow, I don't, I really don't know what's, what's going on. Um, especially the pressure, you know, newborn and, and so many things that you're juggling. Um, so I guess like what, what was like, my tip? you're thinking some of these thoughts and it seems like there must have been like it seemed like you're back against the wall like i gotta make something work so what was that i guess that transformation moment for you to begin like oh let's 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 do something let's create something from from this space yeah um you know i started just kind of talking to a lot of people that are way smarter than me and um something kind of clicked where i was like you know i have a feeling this isn't going to just go away and a lot of people are stuck in their homes and at the time it was like April, May. So in Massachusetts, it's not really like hot or cold, you know? So I'm like, I have a feeling like in a month or so, it's going to get hot. People are going to be stuck in their homes and they're going to want air conditioning. So I called up my marketing guy and I was like, listen, like, let's, let's go at this full steam. Let's promote virtual sales meeting, um, which were looking back more challenging. It sounds great now, but at the time it was like, People have their cell phones and they're like, I'm yeah, doing like, you know, this. I'm like, put your phone this way. No, that, look, that. So virtually, you're literally, you're literally mean like a FaceTime or like a Zoom call. That's what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and then actually, even since then, we still continued part of our stuff, still uses Zoom to this day. But um, it was a little challenging at first, but it worked. And we're actually able to give, you know, this challenge to say, hey, listen, I know, you know, you're nervous. If you let us come in, you know, basically, I was just like, let me get the guys in here, start doing this at cost because I was blown through my saving and it worked. We ended up, you know, getting pretty busy set up and um, getting the guys set up. I mean, and, and their schedule was full. And yeah, before you knew it, people started to be a little bit more comfortable. And we already had this like um, jump start from like end of April that uh, we were able to get going. Wow. And, and that's really awesome too. You know, you, you did it during the pandemic, but also if you're still doing it now, I mean, imagine that saved you some costs from actually having to drive out there or the gas and the time on the road, the opportunity cost of that time. Um, like, I guess now, like what's the split with using that? Like, is it like 70% in person, 30% virtual or like how, how are you still using it uh, today? Um, now we still do a mostly in home, but what we do a lot of times if we're dealing with like a one legger or we can tell they're just like, like people right now are just super adamant at getting like a ton of bid uh, mm. and, and quotes. And so we use that process as like, um, hey, you know what? Here's our price. We keep it retail and then see what they say. And then we'll say, how about this? Like you told me earlier that you're looking at uh, making a decision by when. Uh, this Friday. Okay, perfect. And you have someone coming on Thursday and you're probably just going to put them all together and pick the cheapest one, something like that, whatever they say. All right. How about this? I'm looking at my schedule. Um, why don't I return back here Friday afternoon? Would that give you a chance for your wife, uh, Sarah to be home? And then sometimes they say yes, and we'll still keep it in home. But what I like doing with that is it gives them something to say no to. Mm -hmm. A lot of times in sales, people don't give people things to say no to. And so I like to give them something to say no to so they can say, so John, you can say, yeah, no, honestly, why don't you just email it to me? I said, how about this? I'll do you one better. Um, why don't we meet you? I know you said Sarah comes home at like five o'clock, probably want to get settled in, get some food. Why don't we meet at seven? I can break off from the family and we could do a Zoom call. And that way I can make sure you and Sarah both have equal access to the and then it's really hard to say no to that because like I said, I already gave you something to say no to before and uh, that works really well. So we do it mostly for that. So, so we end up still doing quite a bit of Zoom calls. I'd say, yeah, probably, again, they're still in person, but there's that 70-30 split probably where we're still following up that way. Um, and and it, it actually works really well because here's the, you know, probably throwing too many nuggets for people, but the cool thing is so many people around the country, they'll complain, oh, you know, there's one leggers. Dude, if you come to my house to give me a quote, I'm probably not going to be home. Or my wife's not going to be home. Like, it's just, you're not going to get us both here at the same time, most likely. So it's kind of back to what we're talking about with, with um, Best Buy and these different companies. You have to learn how to innovate. And now where we have technology at our disposal, this isn't the trades from the 1950s. Use technology to your, to your advantage. And that's one of the ways that my guys do that really well. 
because if, if I'm on a Zoom call with you and your wife, chances are no one else is. And mm -hmm. chances are your wife is like, well, these are just a bunch of numbers. And now I can explain, you know, hey, Sarah, can I explain you why our quote is $2,000 more than the other one? Yeah. And I'm doing something that no one else has the opportunity to do. That's amazing. Yeah, having the opportunity to be with them as you're reviewing the proposal. Because if they're just reviewing it and it's like, you know, you told the husband and he's passing over the information to the wife, now it becomes, just look at the price, right? There's, there's no one to make the case for the value that you're, that you're providing, you're adding. Um, it's amazing. Uh, and I also just loved uh, the idea of just like getting them to say no. Because I think a lot of folks in sales are thinking about what's the yes ladder, get them to say yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. But uh, it's it's almost like, wow, like, no, it's it's like the reverse. And, you know, I think it gives people a sense of control maybe as well if they, they say no. The, um, the book, uh, I'm like a, obsessed with, uh, you're probably familiar with it, um, Never Split the Difference by Chris Morris. Yes. Yeah. And so like, that's something that I've really adopted in my personal life and sales where I'm always looking to get some sort of, um, negative question, something that's going to connotate like a no response. Um, and so that for me is a very easy one where, Hey, if you don't want me to come in your home, I get it. You guys are busy. You get a bunch of quotes. You probably don't want to do this all over again. Your time's valuable. Why don't we do that? I'll do you one even better. Then I come with it. I love that. Now for the Zoom, let's say that a company doesn't currently do these Zoom appointments with their customers. How would you advise someone who would want to implement that into their business? Yeah, so really my sales guys are the ones that really control that process, um, which they should, you know, like it's their call, right? So they should take ownership of that. And so even if you're a salesperson at a different company and, you know, I get this a lot from, because I, I talk to a lot of different um, sales guys, business owners around the country that, you know, call me for advice or, you know, PM me on Facebook or whatever. And I, I hear these same excuses from everyone and some sales guys, oh, my company does this, my company does that. Dude, like you go into a lot of different sales companies, they don't even have leads to give you. You have to go out and find your own or knock on doors. Uh -huh. Like you get like a company vehicle, gas card, leads that are just given to you. And it's like, oh, my company doesn't do this or that. Like, <laughs> You know, where's the beanbag chairs? <laughs> exactly. You're like, where's the beanbag chairs and where's the ping yeah. pong table? I need to get to <laughs> yeah, take ownership, man. Like to me, if that's my call, I'm doing whatever it takes. Like if I need to go back on a Sunday at five o'clock, I'm going back. Like I, I do it as the owner. Like there's some sales I still do. I'm, you know, my wife is used to it now. She's like, where are you going? Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Hey, I'm going to the home. Why? Because I know no one else is going to do it. I'm going to be the only person there in front of you and Sarah. And now it's Sunday. It's calmer. It's quieter. Right. Or if again, if you can make it to zoom on Sunday, they're both in the room and you know, you could use a little bit of rapport and humor. And it, like, to me, it's like, those are, I actually love those calls because they're, they're almost yeah, always. Nice. Yes. I love that. I love that. So I guess in terms of someone implementing it. So let's say that there is a salesperson and would, so they would just, I guess they would have to get maybe some corporate approval, but then just have that link as an option uh, for them. Is that just part of the sales process? It's not, it's like, hey, this is one of the options that we have to, you know, we can meet via Zoom, these dates, these dates, instead of us driving over or? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so like from what my guys will do is they'll they'll usually do them in the evening. And so okay. they'll let the uh, CSRs know at the front office, hey, um, I booked a Zoom call for, um, five o'clock on Thursday. Can you just put it as a task in my schedule? And then that way they know not to book anything to them at that time. And then, mm. yeah, those person just sends the link and does what they got to do. That's amazing. Uh, again, I, and I also think it's, it's great because, uh, you know, you're providing these options, but also, you know, again, they don't have to go out there. So in case they, you know, want to hop to personal business right after, since it's late in the evening or take another call, it's, it's not having to drive out and then drive back. So got it. Really, really cool. Um, awesome. So I, I guess maybe to transition about this idea of the best buy model. Um, I loved it. How you explained it on our, on our past call. Like, could you maybe talk about the inspiration behind it? I know there's a moment you're like, wow, this is really innovative. And maybe just walk through that philosophy first. Yeah. So 
to get there and build some context, like this has all happened more recently because like Best Buy was, that model was really during COVID. And so for COVID, um, yeah, big box store, selling electronics, crushing it, right? Doing really great. Then COVID hit and nobody, you know, nobody's out able to go to your stores. They shut down the stores. And so their sales started to really hurt, obviously. And so they had to make a really big decision. So the CEO talked about how it was a, a, a huge decision that they made at the time where, where obviously looking back, it worked out really well for them. But what they decided to do is close the stores to the public and open up curbside, curbside pickup, something they didn't have before. And it felt simple, like when you do the process and you're like, yeah, you know, like went online, went to the store, picked it up, went home. But understanding like all the intricacies in that process just really blew me away. And so I started like really meditating on all of those things and like processing it. So I'm like, man, like you had to come up with the process, write it all out. Then you had to have like your web developers put this on the website. Someone had to test that. Then you had to create workflows. Like, hey, when someone clicks curbside, what stores are going to go to? Yeah. When it goes to that store, they have to get alerted to say, hey, like Jonathan is purchasing a new, you know, Xbox controller. Um, how many do they have? So now you have to have some communication with the warehouse to be able to even know how many are even there or not there. Um, at that point, then, you know, it gets alerted. The warehouse then just goes, they finds it. Then you get an email saying, hey, like this process, if someone had to build all that, then you show up and then you go to a parking lot. Well, now this parking lot, they're like, well, where are people going to park? Our parking lot's huge. So then they designated certain lanes and with signs saying, you know, lane one, lane two, lane three. Someone had to create those signs. Someone had to, you know, paint the lanes and some of the ones they made actually have different colors for the, for the wine. They had to pay someone to do that during that. Um, then they had to do all the training that went behind this. And the part that I find really fascinating about it is it's not like they said, hey, we have this really brilliant idea. We're going to do curbside pickup and it's going to be so revolutionary. We have like a year to get it done. They needed to get it done like yesterday. <laughs> they got all that done in like crazy amount of time and created this experience. And that's the part that I really find interesting is because at the time, everybody's home. And because people are home, like I said, maybe they had a lanky dink PlayStation controller. And if you're like me and you get mad, probably go through a few of them. <laughs> you know? Growing in like, hey, John's got anger problems. <laughs> He's gone through five controllers this week. <laughs> uh, yeah. My wife's not looking at because that <laughs> source of attention uh, in our household. <laughs> so now I'm like, damn it, now I need another controller. So you go on Amazon, but everybody's on Amazon. And so, you know, for us, I feel like, you know, we have just boxes coming every day at my house. But now, because everybody's using Prime, Prime's not one day, two days anymore during COVID. It's taken a lot longer sometimes. And I want stuff now, just like everybody else does. And so Best Buy thought of that and said, hey, you want it now. How about we create a different buying experience where you can literally go online, pick it, and within an hour, half the time, or even less, they'd be like, yep, it's ready. I drive 10 minutes to my closest Best Buy. I show them my ID. I don't have to be worried about catching anything. They're not, it's fully contactless. They put it in my trunk. I drive home, and within the hour, I'm back to playing games and smashing controllers, right? And so, like, that whole process is something I really thought about because now... You, you, you fast forward past COVID, of course, just like everybody else, we were like drinking rocket fuel and the company exploded. And, you know, we went from a million to two and a half to four million to seven million last year to on pace for 10 million this year. But between last year and this year was a crazy thing because when I started my company, it was right after um, the 2008, 2009 recession. So I never ran my business through a recession before. And for us, we always had this like 95-5 split where 95% of our revenue came from our install department and 5% came from service. And, you know, you talk to Goose and like, oh my God, like you got great numbers. That's amazing. You're doing awesome. But what no one ever really talked about, except really one person, um, Mickey Stone, she's my business coach at Cern Path. She's phenomenal. Um, she was always the one that's like, you really need to get your service department in line. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah but we're, we're killing it over here. We're growing crazy numbers year over year. But now 
you fast forward to like September, October, 2022, and the amount of marketing leads we got just changed overnight. And buying decisions change with customers, you know, where they were typically like, yeah, we'll take your top package with all the bells and whistles. Now they're like, you guys are $20,000 more than the competitors and they're picking the cheap guys. And so I really needed to change my model. And so I didn't know what to do. And so I started like looking up this type of stuff, looking up at, like I said, like I remembered the Best Buy model. And I said, you know, we really need to innovate our entire process. We need to switch our whole business model around where we're going to provide um, an experience. And in addition to that, create something that you, like you're not going to be able to get somewhere else. And so for us, what we did is we said, we have to really change it from being such a heavy install company to more of a service-based company. And then look at that entire model for how we're doing business and change every single part from the, the way they greet the customers um, to the way we book the call, to the way the guy comes in, does the call, to how we do the lead turnover process. We have a, a project supervisor that comes behind them and specs out everything. That's part of our buying uh, journey that we let them know that's very unique. Um, and we do that in order to make sure that uh, we don't miss anything and that, you know, your system's up and running as soon as possible and you're super happy with it. And then we send the install team with equipment and everything stock ready to go. And then afterwards, we send a service technician um, to do a quality check to, again, just ensure we didn't miss anything for you and that you're super happy. And that way, too, we, what we found is a lot of homeowners will learn to live with things. Like, they'll live, learn to live with, like, a funny noise or air is blowing too much in this room and not this room. That's the time where we can come out and make sure that we tweak all those things for you because we don't want you to live with anything. And then lastly, we back it up with guarantees and warranties that most of our competitors around here don't have because we just made them up, just created them ourselves. And so once you put that whole entire thing together, it sounds great. It sounds easy. But then just like I said with that Best Buy model, we need to have this done yesterday because we're not making any money right now. I got to get guys trained up that weren't service technicians before. I got to then train them up because, you know, what we found is once we started doing this guys were going to service calls and then they're like hey john so you want a new furnace okay i'll have the office give you a call like by the time the office calls you you're like oh no nah, i'm good i don't care I don't, you know so like we have to tweak that whole process and retrain on that and so every single step has taken like processes writing it out building i just i build up so many powerpoints and then we do like off-site trainings or we have a training room in our office where we do it on site and we're just constantly doing this to refine those processes. So that way, now we're, we're about 70, 30. So like 30% of our revenue comes from service, 70% uh, 70 comes from install, 30% service. And uh, what it's really done is it's helped us be more like this. And so now I I'm never going back. Like just like Best Buy, you notice they still have curbside pickup because there's some people that actually prefer that, right? Um, oh, and check out the other thing that really, was interesting with with Best Buy is once things started to open up a little bit more, they didn't just open up the floodgates. They actually, um, they have like, I don't know, a thousand stores around the country. And with about 700 of them, they started doing one-on-one -on -one appointments. So something you couldn't even get anywhere else, right? They created this, this unique buying experience where, yeah, you can go ahead and buy that dishwasher or washer machine online, what does it look like? How does it feel? How big is it? Like, can I get a comforter inside? Like, I don't know. Well, hey, you know what? I can drive down to my Best Buy, make an appointment. They'll give me a half an hour, an hour an appointment. And I'll literally have somebody there to be like my personal concierge to provide this immersive experience to help me with this. John, what do you think the chances are that if you're doing that, somebody's going to walk out with a wash machine? Especially oh, if you're making it affordable. Place. You know, so... To me, it was the same thing, right? Like, how do we make it where we can provide this experience like not like nobody else, and then also figure out a way to make it affordable with financing and stuff? And that's really helped change the game for us as well. And the one thing I'm pulling out from this as well is um, you really do listen to your customers, and you're you're monitoring how I mean how the market is shifting, and also just understanding like sentiment, like you know the fact that 
you know, Zooms and all these things are now available. Before, 10 years ago when you started this, that wasn't the case. Nope. Things shifted. Um, pandemic, right? You know, there's just a different state of mind. There's there's more fear around what's out there. I don't want to give this to my family, you know, all this, my health. And then just like listening in and keying in on, you know, what are those needs? That, um, and also with that, you designing unique solutions and it sounds like also guarantees that no one else in your market was doing. And so um, it's, I mean, it's, it's no wonder why, why you, grew, you grew as well, because you, you have your ear listening to the market, listening to, to your customers, which is amazing. Um, there's this book that I really love. It's called uh, The Innovator's Dilemma. And basically the idea behind it is that bigger companies, it's, it's harder for them to change. So it's really magical that Best Buy moved in the way that they did. But if you're listening to this and you are a smaller company, maybe it's just yourself, maybe you have a small crew of 5, 10, 15, 20 people, you have the ability and capacity to change because it's not as big of an infrastructure to shift. And so, you know, as, you know, as things go along, really main thing is, is really think about the advantage that many of you have by being a smaller company. Um, you know, that innovator's dilemma, these big companies, Best Buy seems to be an exception, but if you're a smaller company, you have the ability to change, you have the ability to retrain, and you have the ability to, to nimbly move to really, you know, get things moving, changing and implementing some of these great ideas from the podcast. Honestly, like that's the, that's the thing right here. Like I've talked I've spoken to so many business owners right now that are, they just seem like they're defeated. Like they're just like, you know, a lot. It's like, listen, man, like, again, we've been drinking rocket fuels for like the last three years. That's not sustainable. Like, so like probably look at the numbers. We're probably like back on par with 2018, 2019 and just kind of moving. I'm not saying like there's absolutely something going on with the economy and things are happening, but I really believe like it's all about your belief system, right? And so for me, it's like, what can I do to stand out during this time? Because absolutely, like I know the customer's perception is going to look and say cheaper is better right now, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and understanding why, like I get it. Like, you know, money's tight, inflation's high, you're getting less for your dollar. And so you're probably looking and saying, hey, like, let me take these three companies, put them all in a bucket and just pick one out, especially the one that is the cheapest, right? And like actually being able to communicate that with the customer and they're like, yeah, pretty much, you know, you're right. Yeah, I completely understand. But here's my greatest fear. My greatest fear is you're going to spend a lot more money trying to save money. Does that make sense? And then I can explain how that process works. And then what I'll usually say is, I know when I came in, you told me you really loved our reviews and, you know, you had a, a you know, you saw us on one of the mommy uh, sites on Facebook or something and they, a bunch of people referred us and thank you so much for saying that. Um, but you know, a lot of those customers felt the same way you did. They were getting other quotes. They had people cheaper, but they decided to go with us. Can I tell you why they decided to go with us still? And then now I'm explaining whatever unique value proposition. And this is the point that I stress because I'll ask people, what's your unique value proposition? And it's like, uh, well, we've been in business since 2005. Well, you get what? In that bucket, one of those guys is in business from 1997. So, um, well, you know, I'm an expert in this and we do commercial grade installations. I hear that. I'm a consumer. I don't even know what that even means. Like that doesn't mean anything. That what is that? What, like if I go back to my wife and I'm like, yeah, babe, I spent twenty thousand dollars today. But they do commercial grade installation. <laughs> you know, so you gotta have something really tangible, something that they can take back to the bank that they could talk to their um, spouse about and say, okay, cool, the price is here, but I'm getting so much more value going with this company, even though they're more money than someone else. And if you can do that, um, and and articulate that well, and you know, that process can be dark as well. For me, it was tough because I'm like, well, you know, we're, we focus on green technology and greener solutions. Well, you know what? In Massachusetts, they're throwing so much money around that local oil companies that were like, you know, oil, they're now changing their name to like energy. And they're saying that they're specializing in energy efficient solutions. So you got to find like whatever it is. If it's your, like for us, it's our buying journey and the services we provide after the sale that's what we really get into and talk about. 
finding out whatever that is for you. Um, and then, like I said, not be like you said, using technology, whatever it is to innovate, to be different in any way possible right now is what's going to help um, people. Because, you know, it's like anything. You look at a uh, blockbuster, blockbuster and Netflix. Blockbuster was on top of the world for decades and decades. Had the opportunity, I don't know what year, maybe 2000 to buy Netflix for like 50 million. Left uh, Reed Hastings out of the room. But he, it's because they couldn't see what was coming. They couldn't figure out how to innovate. This industry is changing. It's going to, I mean, in the next five years, this conversation is probably going to be outdated, you know? And, mm -hmm. and it's going to be like, oh man, we're on the way bigger and different things now. Um, are you willing to learn how to, instead of saying, oh, I've been doing this since 1990, we're going to keep doing it. Okay, then you're probably going to end up like Blockbuster, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that. And, um, and it's really controlling what's within your control, right? It's, uh, you know, what's happening in the market is happening. Um, and then it's almost like choosing, I don't want to race at the bottom on price. I'm going to choose to run a different race. And it sounds like a piece of that is like, okay, it's, 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 it's reframing the conversation for the customer, but also, you know, what's that, what's that additional value add where it's not, where the price is not the most important thing. Um, you know, I think there's I'll always going to be people like that, right? Yeah. And I'll give you another one too, because we're talking about, and I want this to be very like useful for people, your audience. So like, I'll talk to a lot of sales people at other companies, like, yeah, but our company's this and our company doesn't have this or doesn't have that. Here's the big thing. Like I, like I was talking to my buddy, uh, Chris Murphy at Blue Bear, another uh, good sized company up here. And one of his guys does something I love. He's like, hey, John, here's the thing. Like, well, <laughs> looking at the screen, it. he's like, listen, I'm just Jonathan from Holbrook, Massachusetts. Like, forget the company. This is what I would do if I were you. And this is like how I'd help, right? And that's the big thing that I talk to my sales guys about is like, what's green energy's unique value proposition? That's great. But they're buying you. What's your unique value proposition? So like, if you're there and you're like, again, like, well, I've been doing this since I was young or that. Yeah. Okay. Great. Like one of my guys has a phenomenal, uh, segue where he talks to them and he's like, you know, oh, you, you know, you're living in Boston, Massachusetts, how long have you lived here? All oh, that's fantastic. He's like, yeah, I actually live, I actually uh, live in Tingsboro, which is about an hour away. And they're like, Tingsboro, you drive all the way from Tingsboro? He's like, you know, it's a funny thing. I actually passed about 50 different companies on the way down here. And uh, you want to know why I drive all the way from Tingsboro to come here? And it's like, the because people are just like, yeah, why? Like, you're crazy. And he's like, you know, it's because of this. It's because, of, and it's all unique value proposition, all the things that we do differently. And then he's like, and here's the thing. You look at my reviews, you'll see my name all through there and how I personally hand held each of my customers because I personally guarantee that this is going to be an investment and a protection on your investment. And then when I'm done, I'm going to give you my, my cell phone number. And it's the same number my mom calls me on. You can call me day or night, weekends, it doesn't matter. And it's like money. Like that whole phrase that he does, it just, his, his closing rate is higher this year in a down economy than it was last year. And our prices haven't, it's not like we had to slash anything, but it's because what is it that makes you unique? What is it that makes green energy unique? And then really hitting that home because to me, like, with anything, especially with sales, like you already know the answers to that. Like if I, if I asked you for your business, like what are your biggest uh, objections you get? You're going to be like, boom, 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 oh, it's this, that, that. But then when I say, cool, how do you overcome them? A lot of times it's like, wow, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, like you have the answers to the, the cool. You have the questions already to the test. Like all you got to do is study them and, and know what you're going to say and have that in your bag. And so like, that's kind of the thing that we do here, where it's like, yes, the company is great, but at the end of the day, they're going to want to buy from a real human. What makes you different? What are you going to do different for me that nobody else is going to offer? Wow. I love that. Yeah. And really personalizing it. I, I love the line, you know, this is, this is the same number my mama calls me on day. <laughs> I was like, that's right. That's, that's amazing. I was like, I need to write that down. No, we haven't said that. It, my, my guy, Tim, he's watching this year. That gave me chills. We were in training and he, and he said that. And I was like, dude, I am so stealing that line. Like, that is amazing. Oh my gosh. Uh, wow. 
<laughs> and I, but I, I guess um, maybe this is a quick transition as well. Uh, one other interesting thing we, we, we talked about in our prior conversation was um, how you've begun to hire a number of folks from the Philippines, you know, um, and obviously, you know, if anyone doesn't know, I'm, I'm Philippine. My parents are from the Philippines and immigrated over a long time ago. And um, so anytime I see, you know, folks hiring and, and, and putting back into the economy, I'm, I'm so happy about it. And so I wanted, uh, I guess for the business case, I'd love to hear more about how that came about. Because um, from what, what I gathered, you're, 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 you're able to cut costs. You're able to do a lot in terms of efficiency. Like, could you talk us through the process, like the problem, and then kind of like how this idea all came about? Yeah. One of the issues we found during um, the fall last year and the winter this year was we were very, like, top heavy. Like, we had a lot of overhead, a lot of people in the office. And like anybody, we had to trim the fat in, in a lot of areas to, to, to um, cut costs and be more efficient. Um, but in with that, I remembered a conversation I had with a couple business owners. And I'm really blessed with that, too. Like, I'd say that's a whole nother hack that I would talk about is, like, make sure you really network really well with people in the area. I mean, a couple of buddies of mine, just to shout them out, like Steve Akeen, Akeen Plumbing, Anthony Mound at Trust One, like I say, Chris Murphy, Blue Bear. We have such a great friendship, but also a network where we share stuff with each other. And so um, about, I don't know, maybe a year ago, Anthony was talking about how he had somebody uh, remote that did, uh, I think, bookkeeping and something else for him. They were kind of making fun of him. And, you know, we're all a bunch of guys who are like, you're an idiot. Like doing stupid stuff like that. Um, but it's easy to make fun of. And so we're doing that. And then, uh, like, after that, when this all happened, I'm like, Oh man, Anthony's kind of smart. I gotta, I gotta call him up. And he was being like super secretive about like who he uses and who he goes to. So then my other buddy, Steve, I'm like, yo, who is Anthony using for like his remote people? And so Steve's like, like, Steve's the one that really blew my mind with this because he's like, bro, my entire front office is remote. He's like, my, my, my front office manager, my dispatcher, all my call center people. And so I really stole a lot of this concept from Steve. I definitely want to give him credit on this because um, what he does is he has a, a Zoom every day. They're in a virtual meeting and they all have virtual rooms that they're in. And so him or any one of his managers can pop into these rooms, listen to how they're answering calls, uh, talk with them, give them assignments, whatever. Uh, and so it's like they're actually part of his company. And so I was like, this is right up my alley. I think this will be phenomenal. And so um, there was a company... Um, Sphere Rocket, the one I use. Oh yeah, oh, Sphere Rocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I saw I saw the CEO speak, uh, Justin, not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, so we use them, and uh, it's very inexpensive. Um, they set up the whole thing for you. The make sure you plan enough time for the interview process because they bring like ten or twelve people to the interview. Like by the end, you're like, oh my god, like okay, I'm done. But uh, man, some of these candidates are, are and it's like anything. Some of them are okay. Some of them are not that great. But like, I've gotten some rock stars from, from this where, I mean, now we're pretty much the same. We have um, dispatching and call takings all remote. Um, what I really appreciate is their work ethic is very different than, than most people I find in America, um, where they're just really hungry for it. And you know, give them assignment, you give them a reading assignment or anything to get it done um they take information well you know like right now actually right before this I'm, I'm writing up an entire training i have for them tomorrow um just to streamline the process and get a little bit better because you know at, just like anything when you implement something you're going to find issues and i'm really big into that like jocko willicks uh if you ever look up youtube uh good jocko willicks good it's like three or four minutes and like, I live my life by that model where it's like run into problems and we'll be like, oh my God, see how this remote concept isn't going to work. It's a failure. There's all these problems. I look and be like, good, because now it gives me an opportunity to fix them and get past it. And now give me the next problem. What's the next problem? Okay, good. I found that. I can keep it moving. So um, we, we've had some issues where we're like the town was like literally like a, a, a stone's throw away. And the customer was like, hey, do you guys service to make a plane? They're like, no, we don't. Because they're like, oh, okay, bye. <laughs> you know, call me back. And they're like, Jamaica. They're like, they thought that Jamaica, Jamaica. 
Like, hey, no, we, we ain't international. <laughs> but that's the thing, man. Like, there's not even a couple of anything. Like, it, it is what it is, right? If I had somebody brand new off the street that, was, that spoke English completely well, they're going to have problems with, I mean, not English, but um, it's from America, right? They actually speak really good English over there. So, yeah, I would, for me, it really helped reduce my office expenses a lot. And it, what also helped me do is as we continue to grow, I've been able to promote some of these call takers who I feel like were a little underutilized because they had skill sets that were actually like even better than just taking calls. Where now I'm, I'm making them um, outbounding um, managers and, and uh, inside sales managers and stuff that they're working. So I'm still keeping these people, but now they're actually helping me produce money and, and be more efficient. Wow. That's amazing. And uh, also you said about issues. I, uh, I, I think of issues as your moat. Actually, uh, Warren Buffett always talks about build a moat around your business. If there's a ton of problems to get to the solution, great, because the people behind you are like, I don't know if I want to, I want to jump that moat. So I think, you know, obviously we don't want just more and more problems, but the problems are not really a bad thing. They're your moat to protect you. They're your competitive advantage because you were willing to go through the issues and the problems and solve them and come up with solution um, and get to the other side. And now you're, in a way, you're insulated um, from someone who is just not willing to, to make the sacrifice. So yeah, 100%. absolutely love that. Um, Great. And again, such a small world, right? First, it was Kevin in the beginning and then Justin. Like, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm probably yeah. going to message him right after. <laughs> like, hey, you got, you got a shout out on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. So, such a small world. So, I, I guess maybe let's um, close with that because you mentioned the importance of it's really a, a peer network, it's your, it's your mastermind, the group of people you surround yourself with. Um, could you maybe talk about um, how you built that? Right. I think it requires a certain mindset to have, right, of abundance versus scarcity. Um, um, like, oh, he's my competition. I can't tell him nothing. So could you could you talk about like how to build that sort of like group of guys or guys and gals? How did you do so, that? Like build that group up? Yeah, I um try to remember back. So I think I just we, we were in like service avengers groups and I would see these guys mentioning Massachusetts and stuff. And if I could do hit that over again, that's something I would have done from day one because I very much am not good at networking. It's not something that comes to me naturally. And so for me, I was kind of like a lone ranger for a long time. And I feel like that's also why I just plateaued and just stayed at a million for a long time because I didn't really, I didn't really get to open up my mind to other possibilities and learn like, oh, wow, that's actually possible. This is possible, right? And so... <clears throat> There was that. So once I started really networking more, like I, I got involved with certain path and they helped me a lot uh, with them. There's contractors around the country and certain path is like next star and, you know, a bunch of these, they're all. And, um, but that, that helped me to network. And then I was like, well, this is great. I'm networking with all these people around the country. What about right here in my backyard? And I, um, we're also part of our Joe Crisera service MVP. And they had a training down in um, Florida that, um, that I, I went to. And when I went to that, uh, Steve Akeen was there. And me and him just hit it off. I'm like, dude, you're like 20 minutes away from me. Uh, and we should link up when we get back. And you know how you say that to a lot of people. And it's just kind of like never happened. Um, but we sure did. And then like I was like, hey, I have this buddy Chris over here. And Chris is running a $10 million, $11 million company uh, in a different area. And then. He brought Anthony over and then from there just kind of kept growing where, I mean, we have like our own little group now on, on, um, on uh, WhatsApp and we share stuff all the time. And it's kind of funny too, because like, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have people that will like put resumes into all our different companies or, or, Hey, I have somebody that's working for you that wants to come over here. What's well, like, <laughs> you're okay. it's, it's, a, it's a small world now over here. Like I'm pretty it's connected small. to a lot of companies. But th what you said, though, was 100% that because I still get a lot of hate online from different companies that are part of our little network. And um, they're like, oh, you know, you're, you're an internet vulture. You're always online. You're always on the town pages posting stuff or whatever, right? And I'm like, dude, like, there's so much work out here for all of us. That scarcity mentality is so 1970s, in my opinion. Like, like 
I've gained so much from having that abundant mindset. And I know I can know I know I can speak for the other guys I mentioned too, it's the same way where we'll get together and we are very vulnerable with each other. That's the other thing I would say too, where we're not like, oh dude, I'm doing this much this week, this month, and oh, you know, you're not doing like instead we're like, hey man, here's all my issues that's going on. Are you seeing the same stuff? I am. Hey, you know, well, you should try this or that. And we're constantly sharing stuff. And so um that. Like I said, if I could do it over, I would have done that from day one, just re- reached out. And that's all I did. I just literally reached out, reached out to different people, hit people up on Facebook. Yeah, I know that you're not that far from me. Like, you ever want to uh, grab a couple of cops, hook up and talk about it? And sometimes they're not even in my service area. So I've had customers that are in that person's area that I'm like, hey, let me send you over here as a really good friend of mine and vice versa. Mm-hmm. I love that. And. Yeah, some I think some keys from that is uh, yeah. First, it's it's vulnerability, right? You know, being able to accurately share like, hey, this is how these are my problems. This is what's going on, and it's it's scary, right? You know, some people like you know, it's like oh, if I reveal my problems, they're going to use it against me, this and that. So I think the foundation you had was was really trust, uh, knowing that hey, these guys have my best interests in mind, and I have theirs, and as a group. Like we can lean on each other. Yes, we're closer in the same market, but we can lean on each other. And, you know, I, I really believe and I really trust um, in these in these guys that, that I'm with. Um, and I think it's cool as well that you're aiming towards similar goals, right? You know, if you, uh, I think it was Jim Rohn that said you're the average of your five closest friends. And it's like, if you're, if your closest mastermind group, or your closest friends are, are folks that want to stay put, all right, you'll most likely also stay put, right? It, it just... It just happens, but these guys are like, okay, we're going upwards and onwards. Um, we're trying to grow. That naturally is going to impact you. And um, and I think lastly, you just feel like you're not alone. Uh, I think being yeah. a business owner, you sometimes like you can't go to your employees with some issues or something that's like on your mind that's weighing on you. Maybe you don't want to, but it's like other business owners who've gone through it. It's like, wow, like I actually am not crazy. Like this, other people are experiencing this too. Um, and so I absolutely, absolutely love that. And um, yeah, the power of the mastermind, it's, it, it's massive if anyone's not in it or hasn't created one yet. But um, yeah, I guess with that, uh, you know, if you are looking to build a mastermind, we do have a Facebook group for the podcast, HVAC Financial Freedom. So anyone who's listening, um, join the group and uh, yeah, we can try to make some magic happen. So yeah, I think we're coming up on the end of the episode. Um, Jonathan, this was an amazing, amazing, there's, I mean, literally nuggets, so many nuggets, like someone will need a wheelbarrow to, to catch all the golden nuggets that you, <laughs> you tossed out here, um, you know, from the Philippines, to the masterminding, to growing the service department, to the Best Buy principle. Um, this was by far one of my favorite episodes that, that I've recorded. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, me too, actually. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's amazing. And, um, and I have no doubt that, you know, what you're building and where you're looking to go, um, it's, it's going to be magical um, wherever you, you end up planting your flag and wherever you want to build. So, thanks, um, yeah, any final words before we hop on off? I just say, man, thanks for, you know, reaching out uh, to come on the podcast. In addition to the abundance mindset, I just love seeing people grow. Like this industry has is, is saved my life, you know, like, and. And uh, I've seen what it's done for me and my family and uh, what it's done for the people that work for me. Um, and uh, I, 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 I get sad sometimes because like, I, I know that there's a lot of companies right now that are kind of struggling. They're going through stuff. Like I said, you know, a lot of texts and stuff. People like, I don't know how much longer I can deal with this and I, I need help. I need to restructure. And the thing is like, listen, man, like have the mentality that you're always going to get through it. It's, it, this is not going to take you out. You know, I'm going to be a hundred percent vulnerable right now. Like during the January, February time, we were so slow that I'm like, if this day is going this way, I'm going to go bankrupt. Like I need to call bankrupt bankruptcy attorneys. I don't even know what this process looks like. And I was like super depressed because I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, again, like go through all this to have a 11, 12 year old business just to take go down the drain. There was a lot of emotions behind that. And this was all happening during this whole transition I was talking about. And again, reaching out to some of these people I just mentioned earlier really helped because they're like, dude, I'm going through the same thing, but like, here's what I'm trying. You know, you should try this. And we just kind of lean on each other. And, 
you know, there's times where I'm going through it and let's say Steve or something is there and Steve's like, you know, dude, stop being a little pansy and, you know, pick up your, you know, pants and, and keep on it. And he just said whatever the right thing is. It'd be like, you know what? You're right. And vice versa. I remember, you know, I was like, let's go. Like, we're getting this. Let's go. And I could tell he was kind of like, yeah, man, you know, I don't know. And I'm like, nah, 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 dude, dude, where's that energy from before, bro? We got this, you know? And so like, so that's my mentality. It's just like, we've all gone through stuff. We've had issues, you know, we all got through the beginning part of COVID and thought our businesses were going to fail. And somehow we got through that and we keep going. So um, just continue to innovate. Don't get stuck in your old ways. Don't listen to the noise about all the stupidness happening around. And uh, let's just keep moving forward. Let's keep moving forward. Onwards and upwards, everyone. <laughs> cool. Well, Jonathan, I appreciate you so much. You, man. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, hope you got some value. And I mean, if you didn't get any value, you're, you just weren't listening. Like that's that's the only that's the only way. But um, yeah, thank you again, Jonathan. I thank you, everyone. And we will catch you on the next episode. All right, take care, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the HVAC Financial Freedom Podcast. Follow us on StreamYard, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and check out our main website www.hvacfinancialfreedom.com to find out how you can also achieve financial freedom.